We are walking in the light It's walking in the light Yes, for a show Oh, oh Walking in the light with the Lord on my side I don't fear no evil with the Lord on my side You're the fountain of life in you We see light in your light We have hope in your light My life shines Death cannot defeat us Depression cannot be yeah, so the night shifts really helped me too because I would carry my books, you know, uh, my laptop, I go with them to work, you know, and so when my patients are sleeping, I would be studying, you know, but when someone rings the bell, then I have to wake up and help them and then get back to, to my studies. And when I feel like now my energy limits are gone yes. i can't do it anymore then i sleep for some few hours and then i continue so night shifts were a really good opportunity for me to 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 be studying at work you know and because i'm alone no one would come and control what are you doing my patients are sleeping they're satisfied and i can do my assignments and um yeah be also satisfied at the end of the day but there's a but there but uh, you you're so tired also when you go to to your lectures you're so tired yeah so sometimes i would sit there and i feel sleepy and you know sometimes you don't even understand you know first of all everything is in german there's some um because now we're studying health sciences and everything is new to me and sometimes i didn't understand the lectures i just sit there and i was like god i didn't understand uh, you see the germans writing taking yeah. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> you don't understand. Yeah. Like, mm, okay, I'll take so long as I got the topic. I go home and I try trans. Uh, I try to look up the stuff in English, the topic in English, and then I understand in English first. And now I come to the yeah. German part, and that also helped me. So you see the uh, the resources that we have now. We speak English. We speak Swahili. We speak other languages, local languages, and this one use them you know use them to uplift you up so if i didn't understand a concept in german i would go and underst try understand this in english and then come back to the german concept and now i'll be like yeah yeah i got yeah, it true. now I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. yeah so uh, survival for the fittest <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um i know people are watching in this thing and how can i come to germany you mentioned mm. you came as an au pair is that the only way um, no, that's not the only way. There are many ways of coming to Germany. You can come to Germany and do FSJ, Freiwilliges Sozialdienst, and um, it's a we call it social year. I think so. It's a social year. You mm. come to Germany. Uh, you have to apply first for it. Maybe in a hospital, in a social organization, and then if they accept you, you go and apply for a visa, and then you come here. Normally, it's one year, one to two years. People can no one and a half years. Mm -hmm. Or pair. One can extend it to nowadays, you know, one Whoa, year to yeah, mm -hmm. one and a half years. You extend it, so that's au pair. We have FSJ. You can come here as a language student too, mm -hmm. yeah, which um, I didn't know before. You can just apply for a language school here and come as a language student. But coming as a language student, you ha need also the requirements. You have to prove to the embassy that you have the resources to keep you in Germany, the financial resources to keep you here, and all that stuff. So so um, I would use au pair and FSJ for people whose pockets are not um, good enough. M me, I couldn't afford coming to as a student direct. So au pair is a really nice stepping stone. Mm. FSJ is a good, nice uh, stepping stone. And also we have um, Bundesfreiwilligdienst no? is also a good stepping stone to come here because they'll be paying you some pocket money. You, uh, they pay you insurances, you know, and so you, you just have a little pocket money. And at that time, you use it to apply for for studies we have people coming here also um with uh, you know they're married and they're not coming here to to start their lives no which um i would encourage if you met someone whom you really love and not you you just married because you want to come to germany yeah so if you're really married out of love and you you know migrate from your country to here that will be okay but if i'm just marrying to come to germany it's it's a wrong move so um and then we have what else do we have we have Ausbildung, you know, we have Ausbildung in Germany, traineeships. 
Um, you can also apply for them and Ausbildung is also perfect for someone who can't finance uh, studies, you know, because sometimes now they're stricter because of Corona and they start getting stricter and they start, you know, the ways are getting so tighter of coming here. So Ausbildung is perfect because you can prove you can take care of yourself in Germany. The company will be paying you and also you can use that time to, you know, do maybe your driving license to develop yourself here. What many people don't know. After doing an Ausbildung, you can actually study. Yes, mm -hmm. you, you, you can, can actually yeah. study yeah. if you want. So <laughs> even if your grades were not good, yes. that they don't allow you to join the student college or go to the university mm -hmm. direct. I love Germany for this because Germany they always have a route for everyone. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. you mi it might take a bit longer, but still you have you know you have the door. It's not like now you have bad grades you want to get through, but Germany gives you an opportunity. Okay, you don't have good grades, but you can still go through way this way. It will take a bit longer but you'll you'll okay, reach your yeah. destination mm -hmm. yeah that's the beauty of it there's one website that i would like to uh, give the viewers mm -hmm. Uh, they they are uh, they punct they they a yeah, mm -hmm. you know it I that know it, no? yeah. it's a perfect website for people looking out to come to to Germany go to uh, they are they are uh, they punct mm -hmm. they a um, you write it on the screen when yeah, we'll <laughs> you write it on the screen for people to mm -hmm. know where they can get information on studying in Germany mm -hmm. you get universities there and their requirements and everything what what I really find um, what I really find really not nice mm -hmm. yeah. You you know as many people would ask me marina how do i get to study i give them the information but then people don't want to do research for them <laughs> that's that very true that's very yeah. true you yeah. give them the information you yeah. give them the website the yeah links, everything, everything they need, they need. Still, yeah. they still don't because i think we just through. we just get comfortable yeah and we're like okay maybe someone is in germany can help me i do you applications exactly. and everything and then give you your it's visa here <laughs> Yeah, many yes, ones there. Yeah. yeah, you spoke about before we come to marriage, mm. which I think it's a very important topic. Mm. You spoke about culture shock at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what was it like? Oh, culture shock, you'll get it. Uh, you get the culture shock because you're coming from Kenya, a very warm country, and the social life is different. And then you come to Germany. I came in winter. In November it was so cold and me with my Kenyan mind at that time you know my cousin told me it's very cold here so make sure please you buy you know you buy warm jackets for winter and he also explained to us how thick the jackets are supposed to be me with my Kenyan mind at that time I'm thinking no I'm going to Germany you look you have to look nice you know? <laughs> Yeah. And I don't need, I don't need like a huge, you know, jacket that will make me, no one will see my nice clothes. I'm going to Germany. Hello. Yeah. And so I didn't buy a, a warm jacket. You know, I, I wanted to dress nicely coming to Germany. Mm -hmm. Wait until I get to the airport. I was like, oh my God, uh, am I in a freezer? You know, it was freezing cold. Yeah. That was the first culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first culture shock. The second culture shock was like, I thought now, you know, I did my German in Gotter Institute and I just did till A2 level. Mm -hmm. And now I thought, mm, now I can go to Germany and, you know, we can learn how to speak. I came here, I didn't understand the word. <laughs> this is life here now you have to because it speaks so fast mm -hmm. and oh, you um, I, I used, so, yeah, I so. <laughs> because you know you, you get to just laugh because you know you you're somewhere with the Germans they make a joke you don't understand yeah. but because you want to be polite you just laugh a lot exactly, yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that and mm -hmm. so that was my second culture shock um, and uh, the third culture shock was like how beautiful just the nature was mm -hmm. even in the, the winter especially in its own the buildings the the streets were so nice and I, I remember I was on, on you know my window side uh, mm -hmm. my my room was on I had I was on the road side so I would just stand there and look around you know really? like a naive Aww. village girl <laughs> I would just be looking outside, I'm like, wow, mm. and the streets are so nice, and the yeah. buildings, you know. Mm -hmm. But allow yourself to just enjoy it, you know, allow yourself to just be naive and enjoy. And that's the beauty of it, you yeah. know, just enjoy your time here. I remember 
my my host family at that time they had like a four star hotel mm -hmm. and uh, i didn't know that there are doors where you just press with your feet and it opens up you know <laughs> So I'm coming and I'm trying to open this door. I pushed the door so okay. hard. <laughs> oh, and the door is not opening. Mm. And then one employee saw me and was like, oh, it's easy. you're trying to get in. Let me show you how to do it. And yeah. he just pressed somewhere, oh. you know, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So the small culture shocks, you mm. know, but at the end of the yeah. day, you take it with humor and mm. you enjoy yourself. Yeah, you didn't watch the... <laughs> yeah. um, wash machine mm. also the like washing machine <laughs> and talk about washing machine mm -hmm. i learned you know i learned when i was working you know as an au pair I learned how to do staubsaugen mm. how to i never used a, a, a staubsaugen before not a vacuum cleaner i'd never used it before and so i was like oh wow this is interesting okay. so <laughs> it was just easy. yeah it was mm. easy so you, life here was a bit and and i loved the buses and near yeah, the the structure and one one thing i laugh about till today uh, people told me the germans are so punctual and everything you know they're so punctual and 100 percent correct yeah, you know? and <laughs> <laughs> so i come oh. i come to germany and i didn't know i didn't know how to check the bus plan you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. so my my host mom has given me an address to go to school and I'm like, okay, they told me the Germans are punctual, so I have to be at the bus stop, very punctual. So I'm there, very punctual, waiting for my bus. I can't see, you know, I can't read when my bus is coming because I don't know how to check the bus plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. But then I know if I'm punctual, nothing can go wrong, you yeah. know. And so I see at the exact time I was waiting at my bus, a bus coming, you know. And I was like, yeah, punctuality. Yeah. <laughs> so I get to the bus stops mm -hmm. and I get inside the bus. And I see just kids, you yeah. know, it was a school bus. They allowed you in the school bus. <laughs> really? You know, they saw how confused I was. <laughs> And the only word that I knew how to, I didn't know how yeah. to construct a sentence and ask, you know, is this bus taking me to the Bahnhof? Oh, yeah. So I just looked at the driver mm -hmm. and asked, Bahnhof? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And, yeah. and he told me, no, this is a school bus. It's not going to the bun of but the oh, next yeah. one. You wait for the next one. It's okay. coming. <laughs> so the kids were looking at me like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you imagine and so I the got shock? off the bus and, oh. yeah, the next bus came and I went, mm -hmm. <laughs> I went inside the bus. And, yeah, yeah, those are some of the funny stuff I did. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cute. Wow. Yeah. Yours was extreme. <laughs> Oh, I know the many people who didn't find you went in the, the wrong country. direction, but yeah. right? getting into the school bus. I, mean, that was <laughs> I think quite. it was just my mind was telling me a school bus mm -hmm. would be written school bus. So you know oh, the school yeah. buses in Kenya, the okay, right, you exactly. know, Kanda Boys High School, yeah. Limuru Boys High School, stuff like that. Yeah. And now I know this is a school cool. bus. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, um, yeah. Marina. Um, mm. <laughs> now I brought you out of concert. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so let's go to marriage. Mm. Yeah, so you say that you did not want to um, get married, mm. but you really wanted to get married out of love, like fall mm. in love. Um, and falling in love, you know, in this culture. Mm. Is that really possible? Mm. I, 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 I'm, I'm a believer in love and I believe you can still fall in love no matter how old you are or you, you know you can still fall in love and I'm a strong believer in love and I wanted to really get married out of love but I think God had to teach me also a lesson because now marriage topic is coming now when I've started my walk with Christ you know mm -hmm. I've, I've changed my ways and I've, I've written a book about from sexy to modest and now I'm trying to walk according to God's ways and um, 
And then I realize, oh, okay. I start to have the desire of getting married, you know, yeah. the desire of just having someone. Life in Germany can be so boring sometimes. You're in your student apartment, you just study, you social with people. But at some point, to be honest, you feel so lonely, you know, you feel so lonely. And I started longing for a partner, you know. But then at this point, I was telling God, based on my past experiences, because I never had, you know, good experiences, I, um, you know, I was abused when I was a child uh, and I've never talked about it so openly. I remember there was this teacher teaching me and, you know, was harassing me sexually, you know, oh. and um, and I hated, I hated the institution, uh, you know, the relationship, but I wanted to have someone, but then um, I didn't want it to be something binding, you know, I so I would get into a, a relationship with someone and when it's just walking in the line. Oh.